بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم ڈیئر اسٹوڈنٹس ڈیئر اسٹوڈنٹس ٹوڈے از دا تھرڈ لیکچر آف یور سبجیکٹ رپورٹ رائٹنگ اسکلس اینڈ ان دا لاسٹ لیکچر وی ور ڈسکسنگ سم کوالٹیز دیٹ یو شوڈ بی ایڈنگ ٹو یور رپورٹس ان آڈر ٹو گیٹ دم کنورٹیڈ ان ٹو پروفیشنل رپورٹس and the qualities uh, that we were discussing in the last lecture were that you should be um, choosing a short familiar and conversational uh, words for your uh, reports and the second quality that we were discussing was that you should be constructing effective sentences and paragraphs for your reports and for that we started with the effective length for a sentence what should be the effective length for a sentence then what should be the effective length for a paragraph then we moved on to the effective length uh, length was discussed to the to the exact um, unities that you should be uh, adding up to your sentences and Uh, paragraphs to express what the main idea unity to express the main idea at sentence level in your reports then unity to express the main idea at your uh, paragraph level while you are writing the reports before discussing uh, some more points related to constructing the effective sentences and paragraph in your reports dear students we would be moving to um, a previous point in concreteness that we somehow missed that was choose a vivid and image building words before i repeat again before moving on to this point continuing on this point to create effective sentences and paragraph we would be moving to one previous point of using vivid and image building words in your reports that we missed in your reports dear students you should be using uh, vivid and image building words what is meant by vivid vivid is something that is um, that is quite clear on the minds and image building that creates an image on the mind of your receiver on the mind of your reader on the mind of your listener you must have uh, heard the words like jaha mamta wahan dadla now the point is this what mamta has to do with dalda but the point is this why have they created that comparison that comparison was simply created in order to just create an image on the mind of the receiver something material was linked to something supernatural something material was linked to something emotional mamta now an image was created in the minds of the listeners that this is something uh, so superior that should be tried that should be tested that should be checked so that created an impact where on the memory of the receivers so this is the requirement in the reports as well since you want to make very concrete reports and what is a concrete report that creates an impact on the mind of the receiver for creating that impact you should be using vivid image building words showing some other examples <coughs> a person says for example in the report i felt very good now another person would be saying i felt like a cool breeze blowing now both the people are saying the same thing but one person is saying it in a very mechanical way whereas the other person is saying it in a uh, in an image creating way in a beautiful way i felt like a cool breeze blowing an image of breeze moving on the mind of the on the mind of the receiver so that would be lasting a bit longer on the memory of the receiver and when you are successful through your message in the report stay successful to stay a bit longer on the mind of the receiver that means you are having more chances to get the feedback and that too most probably the desired one so through using image building words you are capturing the memory of the receiver another example there was you know fat people are having something we call the double chins there was a product x named x product 
now one a company is advertising that X product like this your double chin will be removed if you use the X product as directed but another company advertised the same X product in a different way let us see how they say if two chins curl for a place in your collar then X product will help settle the argument only one chin will remain if X is used as directed point is that you in your real life you have never seen chins fighting like humans with each other but this picture was created they were personified the chins a picture an image of two chins curling with each other for what a place in the collar and then X product will help settle the argument as if uh, another person is coming and mediating in order to settle the argument an image is created on the minds of the receiver they get attracted so this message will stay a bit longer on the memory of the receiver as a result of which you as a sender of any report as a sender of any message is having more chances to get the desired feedback and that is what you need so the point is you should be using vivid image building words in your reports now we move back to the next C that we were discussing dear students and that was clarity that you should be creating such reports that are clear and for that the sub points were short familiar and conversational words and then the second point was can you should be constructing effective sentences and paragraph and for constructing effective sentences and paragraph we discussed sub point number one that was what is the effective length of a sentence then what should be the effective length of a paragraph and what should be the the length the appropriate length of the beginning paragraph of the report and what should be the appropriate length for an ending paragraph of the report and what should be the appropriate length for the intervening paragraphs after that we discussed that your sentences should be having unity to express the main idea then your paragraphs should also be having unity to express the main idea the next point that we are going to discuss is about the coherence for clear meanings in your reports your sentences plus your paragraphs especially your sentences should be having the coherence for clear meanings let us see some examples of what is meant by coherence and then what is meant by clear meanings coherence for clear meanings just listen to the sentence that I'm going to speak out mr. ABC was playing with a cat wearing the red jacket mr. ABC was playing with a cat wearing the red jacket cat wearing the red jacket have you ever seen a cat wearing the red jacket but it seems through the structure of the sentence that it's not Mr. ABC who is wearing the red jacket, but rather it's the cat that is wearing the red jacket. Mr. ABC was playing with the cat wearing the red jacket. So the arrangement of the different parts of the sentence is such that it creates some confusion in the meaning. There is no coherence in this sentence for clear meanings. This sentence is not having the coherence for clear meanings. It, the, it needs to be rearranged in order to be more clear you can say wearing the red jacket mr. ABC was playing with the cat you have picked up that part of the sentence which one wearing the red jacket and have placed it directly with mr. ABC wearing the red jacket mr. ABC was playing with the cat when you are writing a report and if you are not taking care of this coherence a wrong meaning might get communicated to the receiver and when through this uh, mistake 
you are conveying a wrong meaning to the receiver then you might not be getting exactly the feedback which you want only the right message conveyed in the right direction will be bringing you back the desired feedback but a confused message which is not having the coherence for clear meanings will be bringing you back either no feedback or a confused feedback that you cannot afford while you are writing a report and you want to be a successful communicator getting the desired feedback other examples again for coherence for clear meanings okay the secretary served let me write it for you Dear students, the sentence is the pian served cold dinner to the hungry board members in cardboard boxes. The pian served cold dinner to the hungry board members in cardboard boxes. Look, the pian served cold dinner to the hungry board members the hungry board members in cardboard boxes it seems as if the hungry board members are in cardboard boxes again the sentence is not having the unity to express the main idea sorry again the sentence is not having the coherence for clear meanings Listen to me carefully. Again, the sentence is not having the coherence for clear meanings. Actually, it is. These are not the board members that are in cardboard boxes. It's the dinner that is in cardboard boxes. But the arrangement of the sentence is such that it seems that the hungry board members are in cardboard boxes. The sentence needs to be rearranged in order to get what we call the coherence for the clear meanings. Let us see how can we rearrange the same sentence. sentence now is the pian served cold dinner in cardboard boxes to the board members to the hungry board members the pian served cold dinner in cardboard boxes to the hungry board members now the cold dinner is in cardboard boxes the right part of the sentence is at right place the modifier is with the modified the pian served cold dinner in cardboard boxes to the hungry board members now it is quite clear through the arrangement of the sentences that it's not the hungry board members that are in cardboard boxes rather it is the cold dinner that is in the cardboard boxes what we are trying to do we are trying to make our sentences converted to the one that are having coherence for clear meanings 
and in our reports we cannot afford to have such sentences which are not having the coherence for clear meanings because if the clear meaning is not conveyed I repeat to the receiver you will not be getting the desired feedback through the reports that you are writing other examples being an excellent being an excellent lawyer I am sure you can help us being an excellent lawyer I am sure you can help us who is an excellent lawyer by the way I or you are talking to some person who is an excellent lawyer being an excellent lawyer I am sure that you can help us through the arrangement of the sentence it seems that I am an excellent lawyer and since I am an excellent lawyer now I think that you can help us mobile up whereas the reality is that actually it's not me who is an excellent lawyer actually I want to I want to acknowledge the professional skills of the other person who is an excellent lawyer and I am nominating him my my listener I'm calling him the excellent lawyer but here the arrangement of the sentence is such that it seems that I'm referring to myself that I am an excellent lawyer being an excellent lawyer I am sure you can help us confused arrangement let us see how can we improve it either you can put a full stop here no no being an excellent lawyer you can surely help us it's a comma over here look being an excellent lawyer you can surely help us it's small u being an excellent lawyer you can surely help us now here we replaced I with you Be being an excellent lawyer you can surely help us or as you are an excellent lawyer I am sure you can help us it's quite clear now that I am calling the other person an excellent lawyer the now sentence now is having the coherence for clear meanings which is required for your reports next example after planting 10,000 berry plants the deer came into our botanists farm and crushed them after planting 10,000 berry plants the deer came into our botanists farm and crushed them listen to me carefully after planting 10,000 berry plants next word is the deer after planting 10,000 berry plants the next word is the deer the deer came into our botanists farm and crushed them it seems it's it is not the botanist who planted the berry plants rather it was the deer D W -E R, an animal who planted 10,000 berry plants and after planting them crushed them it's a confused arrangement of the different parts of the sentence again and is conveying a, m a message which is not clear the sentence again is not having the coherence for clear meanings it's not clear in the sentence who planted the 10,000 berry plants the deer or the botanist let us rearrange the same sentence again in order to make it a bit more clear after our botanist had planted 10,000 berry plants a deer came into his farm and crushed them a deer came into his farm and crushed them after our botanist it's quite clear now after our botanist had planted 10,000 berry plants a deer came into his farm and crushed them so dear students we are trying to make our reports converted into the ones which are clear reports and conveying exactly the same meaning which we intend to convey to the receiver and for that purpose we discussed two sub points 
first sub point was that you should be using short familiar and conversational words and the second sub point was that you should be constructing effective sentences and paragraph there we discussed the length first of the sentence and the paragraph then we discussed the unity that should be existing there in the sentence level and at the paragraph level and just now we completed with the next sub point that was coherence for clear meanings the last point sub point in this subheading is the topic sentences the topic sentences what should be the quality of the topic sentences in different paragraphs of your reports dear student a topic sentence is normally uh, the first sentence of any paragraph normally and a topic sentence is should be the one that depicts clearly what is coming in the fourth coming what is there in the fourth coming lines of the paragraph for example if i say i like minare pakistan full stop first sentence is i like minare pakistan health is a great blessing and one should be giving proper care to the different health issues that one faces every day you should be cleaning your teeth every day in the morning before sleeping you should also clean your teeth you should be having a healthy diet and you should be uh, having fruits in ample quantity so that you remain healthy throughout your life and then you uh, spend a life that you can call a quality life dear students your first sentence was i like minare pakistan and then you moved on to an entirely different topic to an entirely different theme and that was health this was not a quality topic sentence this was not a sentence that could be called a topic sentence by the way a topic sentence is the one which represents directly the ideas different ideas that are going to be there in the paragraph sometimes if you are writing a report your reader is not having enough time to go through all the paragraphs in that case if you are having strong topic sentences strong linked related relevant topic sentences created for all the paragraphs then the reader would simply go through the different topic sentences of your paragraph and no doubt will exactly get the idea what this report is all about but if your topic sentence is not the exact representative true representative of the paragraph then no doubt such topic sentences will distract your receiver and again you will be missing the desired feedback through your report for example you could have the in the paragraph that i just have spoken in front of you you could have started with the sentence health is a great blessing now this first sentence clearly shows that there is something about health that would be discussed in the forthcoming lines of the paragraph this was a relevant linked topic sentence and which is a requirement specially for a good report so dear students the demand for getting your reports converted into the clear reports is that your reports should be having properly uh properly planted properly shaped and relevant topic sentences in the beginning of all the paragraphs of your report dear students now we move on to the next few qualities that your that is the requirement that are the requirement for your good a very good and professional report in any report dear students you should be using the right level of language and in any of your report whether you are writing a formal report or an informal report a short report or a long report an analytical report or an informative report a periodic report or a voluntary report or an authorized report whatever report you are writing 
you should be using the right level of language and then in your report you should be checking for the accuracy of facts figures and words in short you should be writing a correct report use the right level of language now there are three levels of language existing one is the formal level second one is the less formal level and the third one is the substandard level recommendation the demand for your report is i repeat dear students that you should be using the right level of language for your reports how can you use the right level of language for your reports unless and until you know what is meant by the level of the report by the mean what is the meaning of this term levels of a report so there are three levels of sorry levels of a language then the demand is that you should be using the right level of language in your reports then how can you use the right level of language in your report if you do not know what is meant by the different levels of languages existing so there are three levels of languages existing number 1 is the formal level of language number 2 is the less formal level of language and number 3 is the substandard level of language beginning with the formal level what is meant by formal level of language a formal level of language dear students is normally a bit difficult the words that are called that are nominated under the heading formal level of language these words are a bit lengthy and difficult and there are specified areas where we use these formal words for example in your scholarly dissertations in court proceedings you do use formal language so but the recommendation for your reports is not to use the formal language it is to use the less formal language not the informal language i am saying the less formal language that is short familiar and conversational and what is a less formal language which is short again and which is familiar and which is conversational which is simple let us see the different examples where you would see the comparison of the words which words are uh, which words come under the heading of the formal level of language and which words can be nominated as a bit less formal words again the word here is for example the, the word is participate it's a bit more formal you can use the word join then procure the word is procure you can use the word get get is a bit less formal as compared to the word procure which is a bit more formal than endeavor you can use the word try try the word try is a bit less formal as compared to the word endeavor than a certain you can use the word find out which is a bit less formal as compared to the other word then the word deem d double e m deem it's a bit difficult a bit more formal whereas in place of this word you can use a bit less difficult word less formal word and that is think in edifice a bit difficult word a bit more formal word you can use in place of this word the word building then utilize you can use the word use which is less formal then interrogate you can use the word question over here the recommendation is to use the less formal words and we already discussed it in i think uh, the the c clarity that you should be using short familiar and conversational words the demand for writing a good report the last the third level is the substandard level the substandard level what is meant by the substandard level substandard level of language basically is that level in which either the the language is having some spelling mistakes some structural mistakes some grammatical errors or it is a bit abusive now substandard language is not recommended anywhere whether you are writing a scholarly dissertation going for a scholar sorry going for a scholarly dissertation or go court proceedings or you are going for a formal environment or a less formal environment in any case the substandard language is not recommended anywhere in your personal life or in your professional life let us see the words which are substandard 
and the words which are not substandard a comparison sometimes you use you write substandard language in your reports unconsciously you are supposed to be a bit cautious about it that you are not going for any mistakes in your report linguistic mistakes in your report because if you are having such linguistic errors in your report that would then throw your reports under the under the under the heading of you can somebody would be calling it a substandard report the report not worth it the report we should not be called a professional report a non professional report a i n apostrophe n t ant this is wrong you cannot write it like this this is a mistake you either write isn't i s n apostrophe apostrophe t it's not s a i n apostrophe and then t and there is no word like and by the way it is either isn't or aren't the spelling is in front of you on the screen i s n apostrophe and t and a r e n apostrophe and then t can't hardly dear students you never write it like this it's not can't hardly you say can hardly i can hardly believe you you don't say i can't hardly believe you that actually you want to say i can hardly believe you but unconsciously people say it and write it i can't hardly believe you this is wrong it is i can hardly i can hardly believe you aim at proving wrong preposition being used aim to prove the word at the preposition at is being wrongly used here it's not at it should be aim to prove then desirous to desirous to no it is desirous of i am desirous to do this no i am desirous of doing this irregardless there's no word as irregardless the word is regardless irregardless of the fact that we have been doing this no the word is regardless of the fact that we have been putting our efforts comma 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 dash 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 the word is regardless not irregardless then stoled you want to use the second form of steal third form of steal it's not stole it's stolen then brung bring brought brought dear students there is no word as brung it's substandard then should of no should have these are few examples of the words that come under the substandard language level that is not recommended for your reports rather that is not recommended anywhere dear students the next point in order to get your report converted into a more professional reports is that you should be checking for the accuracy of figures facts and words you are writing a report you are initiating a communication process dear students and there if you are going uh, for omissions and errors and mistakes then you might have to pay a bit too much you should be using the accurate figures facts and words in your reports accurate figures facts and words first verifying the statistical data dear students here look this is in front of you i am writing 1 0 and 0 this is 1 0 and 0 this is 100 adding up a single more zero makes it 1000 and then yes yet adding up an other zero will make it 10000 so this is simply an addition of a single zero 
for example if you're just having in your pocket 100 rupees and you are offering through your report 100 rupees but simply by placing another zero you have offered 1000 rupees and then you have to pay 1000 rupees by the way so before moving on the reports with the facts or figures or statistical data go for a thrice check check them thrice for their accuracy that whether you have put the exact and the correct amounts and the figures and the numbers over there on your report it's extremely important then words and figures rather commas full stops brackets exclamation marks then question marks the exact and correct placement of these figures is also extremely important for your reports because the presence of a question mark might entirely change the meaning of the sentence that you wanted to say that you wanted to write similarly putting the exclamation mark at the end of the sentence might hundred percent change the tone of the sentence you might have you might have tried to say something else but simply because of that exclamation mark the entire tone was changed the entire meaning might get changed you cannot afford it let me give you an example the person wanted to buy some shares and he uh, called one of his friends at uh, Karachi that uh, what about should I be buying the shares in the stock exchange and his friend replied just have a look at that reply no price too high no price too high no price too high it seems no price too high no price too high no price too high, no price too high. So that person bought the shares thinking that price is not too high and I think he suffered a loss of 10 billion dollars. And what was missing in the sentence dear students it was a single full stop missing. The exact sentence was no. Full. Okay dear students you can see the sentence was should have been no full stop price too high. You wanted to say don't buy no price too high price is too high but just because of the absence of one single full stop what happened the entire meaning of the sentence got changed and was conveyed in that changed way to the person so what happened is in front of you so you should be checking for the accuracy of the figures as well figures as well numbers figures then accuracy of facts facts this is a very important point dear students a report by definition is an impartial and objective collection of facts but you should confirm first whatever you are communicating as a fact is really a fact because facts change with time as well a thing might be a fact yesterday and it might not be a fact today. For example, if I say at this moment that we are three people standing in this room, it's a fact for this very hour. But if I communicate the same information after one hour to somebody that there are three people standing in this room, might not be a fact at that time. There must be nobody at that time standing in that room in this room so before communicating anything to your receiver as a fact confirm it thrice that whether that fact is still a fact to that very hour when you were writing that report as I said facts do change with time accuracy of facts price check again
the law is also a fact by the way if you are through your report uh, taking some decision or recommending something on the basis of a law that you have simply guessed that it uh, it might be a law or it might have been a law last month in your organization this is not on for a report you cannot go for guessing the laws again the recommendation is check for the accuracy of facts figures and words whenever you are you are writing them up adding them up in your reports and again the recommendation is not a single check not a double check the recommendation is thrice check accuracy of words dear students this is extremely important there are different words which almost seem to have the same meaning but in reality they are not having the same meaning they are having different shades of meaning you might not be aware of that difference in the different uh, difference in the shades of the meaning but your reader might very well know what is the difference between these two words and what is the difference in the different uh, difference in the different shades of meanings between these two words for example there is the word anxious and eager there is the word anxious and eager the word anxious anxious that is something that you are interested in something you want to know something but at the same time you are worried as well it is having an in its meaning it is having the element of worry in it anxious and eager now you we normally do use anxious in place of eager and eager in place of anxious and that is wrong and eager is simply that you want to know you are inquisitive about something there is no element of worry in it now if you do not know the difference uh, in the shades of meanings of these two words that it are you sure that your reader also does not know the difference between the two you cannot afford the intellig intelligence you cannot afford to to simply take the intelligence level of your reader your receiver for granted when you are writing a report you should be using the right word at the right place with the right tone of the meaning and with the right shade of the meaning if you want to show the element of worry in your report in any sentence of your report you are supposed to use the word anxious if you simply want to show the eagerness of somebody the word is eager then a and an normally in front of you there are some groups of words that people uh, mistakenly use at each other's place and that creates much uh problem uh in the report for the audience for the understanding level of the audience and that is not good for your desired feedback the word a uh, and an a uh, is normally used before the consonant sounds and an is normally used before the vowel sounds you cannot say r r h o u r now the word h although apparently is a consonant but the sound that is it it is producing is a vowel sound r the sound is that of a so before vowel sounds you have to put the word a n n and before the consonant sounds i am using the word sounds you have to use the word a then accept and accept a double c e p t accept to receive and where is the word e x c e p t leaving something omitting something people do use accept a double c e p t in place of e x c e p t often mistakenly it's wrong between and among when you use the word between it's between two people 
and when you use the word among it's it's amongst more than two people it involves more than two people again mistakenly used by annually and by annually by annually means two times a year two times a year and by annually means every two years after every two years something that will happen after every two years and by annually means something that will happen twice in the same year the word again dear students says now there are two, there are two more words in front of you continual and continuous continual and continuous continual is something that is occurring after a uh, some regular period of time for example after every 2 hours continually after every 2 hours and continuous means something which is continued without stopping there is no stop there is no pause it's continuous without any stop continual after a regular period of time for example say after every 2 hours and continuous that is continuing without stopping then principal and principal p l e some rule some regulation and p a l it's an adjective the chief the main as a noun or a sum of money and p l e stands for some rule the basic truth so dear students we were discussing the accuracy of facts figures and words in your reports in order to get your reports converted into more accurate professional and correct reports that can be done through in uh, when we are discussing the last c and that is correctness there are two sub points no one you should be using the right level of language and number two you should be checking for the accuracy of facts figures and reports okay dear students in the next lecture we would be discussing the different parts of the report what are the different parts of the report and what is the arrangement of the different parts of the report and what are the different things that should be added up to those different parts of the report and then what are the different degrees of headings existing and what are the different types of headings existing and what do we mean by the parallelism in headings and we would also be discussing the various pre writing techniques that we should be following before writing a report and what are the various means through which we should be collecting the data and facts to be added up to the reports that you are writing thank you so very much students see you in the next lecture inshallah